So now we've gathered our speakers for today, and um, you're very welcome to, to ask questions and, and comments, but just to get the discussion going between our speakers here, um, I was thinking about some, some connect points of connectivity between all of your talks, and obviously um, um, matters of, of representation, reality, space, bodies, and, and all of that was in, in many ways uh, clear today that this is a, a very uh, interesting intersection of, of, uh, of thought and, and artistic work. Um, for, for the morning session, when, when um, uh, Anneli and Oscar and, and um, Talon were, were talking, I was thinking about some of, of, of some aspects that bring together your different presentations and, and, uh, and work. Um, especially I was thinking about something that, that Anneli brought up as one of you talked about uh, technology as an active agent in, in your work and thinking about the, the role of, of the medium in, in the kind of digital stories that you are, are telling and, and the fact that the medium became present in your work. Um, as, of course, is the medium present in, in, um, in Oscar's work and Talon's work as well. So I was thinking if you want to, to start off there and talk about the, um, the, the materiality and, and reflections on, on the materiality of your, of your talk or, or of your texts that, that are produced and stories that are produced within your, within your work. Can you see uh, a kind of connection there within your works? Yes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we have a very uh, good example here. When, when uh, um, uh, tried to present a, a movie and, and it didn't work. So he was actually kidnapped by the technology. And uh, it disturbed the, the narrative, actually, of, of this whole uh, meeting here. <coughs> and uh, together with women, which um, had, um, they entered our workshops, uh, the Im immigrant women, which I talked about earlier this morning, they entered our workshops without actually having a, a, a language, in the sense that they, they didn't write they couldn't write in their own language because they were illiterate and they couldn't uh, understand the, the, uh, the new language which they were supposed to understand. And of course they couldn't understand the uh, computer language. So they were sort of <laughs> um, excluded in man many layers here. So. We had to work with with um, with them in order to make them understand um, the many layers of of, of the language here, uh, and also to really uh, what do you call it um, take the control of the computers. But it was difficult because the the uh, computers sort of craved us to to. Um, to take care of them and, and to adjust them to the situations. So that was uh, several moments when we, when we had to struggle with the with, uh, uh, materials as uh, active a agents, agents actually taking over the, the whole construction of the narrative and also the, the interpretations of language. So yeah, that's an example. Yeah. Yeah. Please, someone. <laughs> 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 I, I was thinking about the uh, Oscar. Uh, oh, you wanted to <laughs> 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 and, and the, and the uh, connection between the different inscription technologies, different ways that you, you obviously uh, use um, your your own skin as uh, um, inscription, a, spa a space for inscription, but also the more structural works that you're. Uh, was showing us about what uh, you're planning to do in Poland. 
uh, with the with the letters and and yeah, maybe that's a maybe that's a funny example or, or a good example related to this because I, I was a bit I was thinking of how do I relate this to technology or digital media but I was thinking of this uh, work that I'm doing in Poland now uh, or that I'm supposed to do that uh, I never done something like that or hardly ever done something like that like an artifact like big white concrete thing I most often use like publications papers whatever cheaper materials and now I've done this white concrete shiny big thing and they were so disappointed <laughs> in Poland <laughs> and actually in Poland uh, since ever since I won the competition a couple of weeks ago they have been actively trying to stop this from being installed because now they wanted <laughs> I mean that's that's what you normally want something like in white concrete or in bronze or or something but now since they had this wind energy technology turbine kind of theme they wanted something else but white concrete so it's it was kind of fun for me to to do that then and to see how disappointed they were and I'm, I'm not it sounds like i'm making fun of them and and i am but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah it was fun using using something that I shouldn't do out of words. Mm -hmm. How long do you see any uh, uh, Just thinking about that, that sculpture piece, that, I mean that is making language material in a very solid solid way. Where, I mean language and, I mean the materiality of language and digital media is more questionable. You know, I mean it's, it's a, a medium that is in constant flux so where is I mean where is materiality and materiality really within language, within digital media? So I mean I would like there's a difference between medium and materiality that never quite gets discussed within like electronic literature circles, or doesn't get discussed very much. It falls back on this materiality issue or or uh, affordances of the medium, and uh, never quite critiques itself. I mean, I think with, uh, I mean, for me, with a lot of what I'm doing, it's about uh, uh, creating, a, a, well, thinking about the Twitter piece, creating a, a no, enough sort of visual noise, linguistic noise, and noise that there becomes a saturation point where it simulates materiality. Um, where you can't pay attention to all the aspects of what's being represented, you have to make a decision um, as to what you read, what you listen to, what you pay attention to. You know, and when I've shown that work uh, or played that work, um, you know, generally they're all everyone in, everyone's looking at the same piece, but you know, some people are more focused on the the visual aspects. Some people are interested in. Wow, you know, some of those stereo pans are really extreme. That's a minor issue, but that's what they decided to focus on. Some people are focused on one little tiny area of text, you know, rather than something else going on. Um, some people don't see all the Joyce references. Some people do. Um, you know, so I mean, that's kind of this kind of simulation of materiality thing that is an affordance of the medium. <laughs> But uh, not usually what's discussed as, in general, as in terms of inform in, in affordance of, of digital media, of language and digital media. Well, I'm thinking about this thing, your experience, Oscar. It's also not a lot of uh, public, uh, like, what do you call that, long term installations that you can do in media. And I think like most cities or most people who work with public art are not really ready to handle media art for this kind of more, you know, they still want the stone and the concrete because there are all of these issues about, you know, building technology for outdoor, for yeah. vandalism and all of that. Yeah. 
And I think that's one of the reasons we actually built the chapel, was yeah. we really needed to build something to give a long-term home for a media installation, <coughs> you know. And the idea we have is to, now we have the technology set up, we have the solar-powered energy, and you could basically put whatever media art inside of, of the chapel. So we will invite other people to do pieces so you can also kind of use it as a gallery. Mm. But I think there are very few examples of, of digital sure. art. Yeah. Well, uh, when I'm thinking about that piece, do you think that there's still some aspect of it being ephemeral? I mean, just because it, it has this rich technology base. Sorry, that, if it has... That it has some aspect of, uh, or that it uh, retains some ephemerality in relationship to the, to the technology and the medium, it, despite building the chapel. Yeah. yeah because, yeah. you know, I mean, the electronics are eventually yeah. going to become problematic. The, yeah. uh, but also they're so cheap off-the-shelf components, so... Yeah. I mean, you need to restore other things as well, paint falling off or, and I don't think that the cost of kind of maintaining that installation will be more than maintaining, for example, Oscar's. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, well, the other, sorry, sorry. Yes. Right. But the, I mean, the other thing is like, you, you know, okay, cleaning a, a, a marble sculpture is hosing it down yeah. <laughs> to maintain it, um, you're scraping off bird crap and stuff like that. but. Um, uh, not there's not a skill level and or training for a technician to even mm. to deal with that. That's really kind of necessary. Yeah. So when you know when uh, if the, if the piece outlives the men and the people who make it, yeah. then who how do you train the technician to maintain? Well, I mean, that? it depends on how how uh, how difficult it is. In our case, it's it's a digital photo frame, and it's just connected to the car battery, and there's a transformer <laughs> in between. So. It's well, really, I mean, well, most of the people have a car. That's, can, a, can change that's a good it, point. Know. When you use technology, keep it simple. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I had this problem. I was curating a show last year called and about Swedish conceptual art. And um, a lot of the works were from like, the late 1970s. And you have this aesthetics of uh, administration where people use like printers or whatever like simple technical stuff that were quite cheap or very cheap to get then and very ordinary was this recognizable oh, things then and then I started to borrow them from institutions that had bought them then and none of them worked and no one knew how to repair them they were like cost nothing then but would have cost zillions to repair or, mm. Mm. <laughs> or the components aren't available yeah. anymore the <laughs> impossible uh, if i could if i could jump in uh, perhaps at that point and um um d because i think this discussion of perhaps the the impermanence of, of digital digital media and digital art in public spaces reminded me of the wonderful example of the fish that live only in puddles and that seem to want to just sort of jump out of them for some reason and uh, I, I love the phrase that you used, that, that, that they lived in a, a risky habitat. And it made me wonder if that is a little bit like what the, the habitat of digital media. Um, and perhaps um, that, that we as, as, uh, as, as artists and academics are reflecting upon this practice, perhaps we're not so different from these, these uh, breeders of these fish who sort of you know, have their basements full of, full of um, tanks. You know, I, I sort of thought of, Lisa, when, when you know, you're looking up all of these um, uh, videos on YouTube, you know, a list of bookmarks is, is in a way like a little catalogue of fish that are about to jump out of their tanks. Um, and bear with me, this is going to get to somewhere in a minute. And I, I, you know, I'm sort of very interested in, in everyone's uh, perspective on this issue, um, in that we seem to be um, emphasising today um, the, our, our own uh, critical practice as a way of organising and protecting uh, species of digital art. And if this is what academia is like, in some ways, is digital media like the fish that jump out of the, out of the puddle? And if so, how do you feel about the possibility that these fish may very well soon be extinct? <laughs> Dimitri. <laughs> <laughs> Start with you and then we'll work on <laughs> Mm. Uh, I came uh, directly um, 
from Moscow Biennial uh, here. And uh, the main question of uh, current Moscow Biennial uh, created by Peter Weibel. You, you know, uh, Peter Weibel is the director of uh, uh, the KM Museum in Karlsruhe. <coughs> is an interactivity. But uh, I paid attention that um, I decided that his main project created by P Peter Weibel was unsuccessful. Why? Uh, because I paid attention uh, that uh, he represented, uh, the, from my point of view, a uh, very old model of interactivity. Uh, those kind of interactivity we can see, uh, for example, in airports uh, when we, we are waiting uh, uh, airplanes, we can play into football or uh, in another game, or uh, some kind of, uh, I mean it, uh, dead interactivity. Yeah, uh, this kind of inter interactivity ask us about absolutely automatic reaction to the surrounding. And uh, I ask a question, uh, how can we invent an artistic, more artistic approach that, uh, which help us to mediate this kind of that or automatic interactivity? And um, how can we mediate through using different artistic approach? Because from my point of view, the uh, uh, another question is that what is the different, what is the difference between art and design? For example, in media art, for uh, uh, for contemporary artistic practice, this question is the most important question. Uh, and from my point of view, the mm, the difference is uh, in the following. Uh, contemporary techno-oriented uh, uh, art do not so much confirm the technological versions of contemporaneity as determine or as outline those versions' boundaries. So in our artistic uh, statement, we have two messages. First message is the, um, about Contem uh, contemporary technological level and as a kind of um, a, as a kind of artistic approach how can we outline this territory of that interactivity or or uh, this kind of technological um, mediation reality how can we outline uh, outline this territory for me, it, w it is a very important question. I don't know how, uh, uh, um, is it actual, uh, is it actual uh, question for, uh, for, 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 for example, for our discussion. Mm -hmm. But in, uh, in, in, in art, uh, I guess it, it is the, the most important question. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, Jessica, would you say that your, your installation pieces are, are like fish that jump out of puddles? Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, in some sense. No, but um, I think what you say is, is, is interesting, you know, from, from our perspective where we have chosen to work with really simple technology mm. and also always work with images of, of human beings, you know, mm. which has been really important to us, kind of portraying people and uh, also that people are, are very forgiving when it comes to technical laws you know I'm going back to the question that, that you got before uh, at one point in some public space we were um, working with setting men that fall up and the sensors were a bit flaky and there was a group of, of women coming and we said you know we're still setting this up you can try it out but it's like you know they get stuck sometimes. And we had like very clearly explained, you know, that the technology doesn't work yet in the way it's supposed to do. And one of the women, she went in front of the man and he didn't fall, he was still standing there. And she was just like, oh, he's a bit shy. <laughs> you know, and she had like just forgotten what we said two minutes later and she just like interpreted that as, you know, part of the, part of the thing. Yeah, yeah. And I think 
it is easier to work around this kind of technical flaws or mistakes when you work with depicting other people, a human being, and the entire like you know discussion about suspension of, of disbelief becomes very important in that play. Also with the installation we did with kind of this dollhouse view of, of someone living next to you and everyone it was very obvious that there is no room. Mm -hmm. Still people went out and you know looked around Look the around. corner. Even though it's very clear they've seen the space, you know, they know there's there's not a room, you know. And and to kind of be open with that rather than striving to make a very complicated um, interaction model. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, anyone else like to comment on? Well, I can tell you about the fish because yeah, you, thank you. you brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, the fish are completely safe. Uh, the fish are completely safe because the survival model that they have, you know, the species has evolved the survival model, which is a non-stable model. It's completely di diversified. And in fact, I think that because uh, uh, they have infiltrated the cultural niche that they have, uh, even if the rainforests are wiped out, they will continue to exist in, in this new kind of uh, liquid uh, uh, niche. And I, th I think it was actually, I haven't thought of it, but it was a funny metaphor if you want to link it to the, the life of new media or you know art and science or whatever, whatever the hell. I mean, I can talk about myself only now, but uh, my projects have this kind of liquidity in the sense that uh, uh, the work, the artwork is in the process, in the scientific methodology, in the process, in the investigation, and then comes a time when uh, you have these results, which in fact, unlike uh, what people a lot, of, a lot of times say about uh, art and science, that the artists are asking the questions and the scientists are giving the answer. In fact, some of my projects actually have answers. They give answers. Uh, but at the same time, there comes a time when uh, you are confronted with the museum, let's say. And then what actually do you put in the museum? Uh, I thought it was nice that you showed Stellark because uh, the ear project that he had has been going on for many years and you know it's, it has been this and, and that and uh, for me the art anyway is in, in the discussion and the process and you know what do you do, how can an extra year work uh, but in fact what we can show in a museum is m this kind of pseudo Caravaggio kind of photo with, with, with the ear because that's the kind of object that the museum likes to have and uh, if you take this uh, out-of-body experience project, for example, that I have, it's, it's a completely non-material project. There is some equipment that you can hack and you can find people who also have hacked stuff. And when you combine this in a way which is not the way it was intended to, uh, you create an experience which actually has very deep uh, kind of links to popular culture, personal culture, the body, the self, and so on. But then when you everybody leaves, uh, what do you have? Nothing. Yeah. Some plastic objects. Uh, and of course, you can paint them with gold and show them in a, in a, you know, in a glass case. <laughs> and and this, is, uh, this is the kind of problem that uh, I think, uh, if you choose to work this way, then you have this problem as an artist. So uh, yeah. But, but the fish are safe. Yeah, good. Yes. Good. Thank you. Mm, Matthias, can I ask? Matthias, uh, if you paid attention to the Stellar project, his project is an ongoing project. So, yeah. uh, firstly, he started to grow uh, this ear and install it in different places. Then, after uh, he put his ear, the third ear on under the arm, he uh, began to test the channel the channel for this mm -hmm. ear because you, you you heard that this ear does not hurt but can transmit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it, it uh, work uh, it will work as a transmitter so the, his next step was to to make different installation in different parts of, uh, of the world and uh, last year we present uh, the next step of his project in Moscow uh, he began to taste uh, the uh, transmitter channel uh, through the web, but he slowly, slowly, uh, step by step, um, 
uh, put different matter into this digital mm -hmm. image uh, into the digital image so um, uh, uh, as for Stellar he, he during whole his uh, artistic life he uh, mm, mm, uh, very slowly uh, tried to mm, transfer from digitality to uh, very hybrid uh, space between uh, cold uh, vet technology, mm -hmm. vet technological art space. T vet uh, means uh, between digitality and vet molecules. So, uh, uh, as for Stellar, uh, he is uh, not produced only uh, images. So he, he okay, it's a bad yeah. example. But I think that the, the point I'm trying to make is that for uh, for me, you know, I know that these objects or, yeah. or uh, um, prototypes uh, and so on appear in art spaces and so but I think the core of the project is the uh, uh, you know the, the investigation about the year so to speak and if I have a, I think that the, the object that that are produced the museums don't know what to do with them and, and yeah. if you if you um, I mean you know if you put a piece of tissue in a museum, then it will only last uh, for a certain time still. So the problem remains in the sense that uh, it's a non-material, uh, non I mean, you can make it material temporarily, but it's a non-material artwork in yeah. a way. Yeah. It, it, it is point, it? Yeah, yeah. I think um, uh, we're uh, just being very conscious of the time. Maybe, Lisa, would you like to make a comment on that and then maybe uh, some concluding comments about what you've oh. got out of today? <laughs> Is this my quiz and mention the fish. Yeah, yeah. No, I just I was thinking about the statement because you that Matthias you made twice, uh, once in your presentation, once afterwards that the fish are safe. Mm. I thought that, that it was interesting. It's sort of this sense of I'm not sure what that is, but this sort of empathetic <laughs> kind of connection with the the, the thing that you're making. But uh, you know, it again makes me think about the original question of the fish jumping out of the tank and sort of nature uh, or the question of safety and 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 what remains and, and aesthetics and all of that and you know I was um, I mean the th you know one truth I think we have is that after the apocalypse we have probably both cockroaches and lolcats um, <laughs> will survive that somehow these sorts of um, you know these artifacts that are produced sort of from the ground up and that arise and that somehow create these empathetic connections with no clear aesthetic models or the inspirations come from these odd little moments that push themselves forward or sort of those are those or you know those organic moments I love the fact that the fish doesn't jump until you leave the room <laughs> but it's, it's kind of watching as you as you do that and I think that there's this sort of sense of survivalism and secrecy and, and subversiveness that's uh, underneath many of these things and I think um, it's interesting just to think about the aesthetics and, and how they evolve that way. Uh, I, I don't feel that, <laughs> I, I don't want to make the, the you know concluding comments on today. Oh, I assume we're okay. at the, the very end, but um, are, are we uh, at the end of our time? We're at the end of our time. We are at the end of our time. And so, so I don't want to try to summarize because I think it's been such a rich, <laughs> d diverse experience. And it was fun to see how the, the, you know, the threads come together, but I would definitely like to thank our uh, wonderful speakers who came from so far away to, to be you know here today and and to sort of realize this conversation that has been a conversation for so long um, so first of all I would like to uh, once again thank you all.